good afternoon, uh, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. Uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to uh, to see you. Uh, my name's uh, Richard Wynn. I'm the founder of uh, ResCognito, which is a free open access platform uh, that is used to uh, make assertions uh, using PIDs. So the assertions can be made by individuals or organizations, and the objective is to reduce the uh, cost of publishing. This is actually my fourth PID Palooza and the third time I'm presenting. So thank you very much to the uh, conference uh, committee for, uh, for inviting me again. Uh, I'm based uh, in Boston. And uh, I've spent the last 20 years or so working in scholarly workflow. And based on that experience, I see some opportunities to, uh, to apply PIDs uh, into the workflow. So I'm going to switch and, um, and share my PowerPoint. And hopefully that'll all go well. Um, so you should be uh, seeing my PowerPoint, and I'm assuming uh, you can. Um, so the uh, jerky or iterative uh, publication approach uh, is really what we're all familiar with, is that we start out with research published in manuscripts. And if you want to contest or build on that research or supplement it in some way, you publish new manuscripts. And again, you continue to publish manuscripts to uh, build on that past uh, research. So the characteristics of this approach is that the metadata and PIDs are actually contained inside the manuscript. And a gatekeeper, such as a publisher or, or, or other organization, provides the provenance or authenticity of the claims represented by those PIDs. And um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hearing a bit of noise, so I don't know if um, if someone could just mute their mic if, if there's noise, if they can. Um, so the, uh, the benefits of the, this approach is that you have quality through control and you uh, have convenient encapsulation of all of those PIDs in the manuscript. Uh, the drawbacks with traditional publishing is that it's very expensive, uh, it's inflexible, and because it's iterative, it tends to be slow. And of course, we've created things like preprints to, to compensate for that. So the question is, is there a way to overcome the drawbacks of jerky publishing uh, without foregoing the benefits that it provides? Uh, or stating it another way, uh, can we supplement iterative publication with a creepy or a continuous publication so as to reduce the costs uh, and increase uh, flexibility? So in order to do this, I'd just like to make a brief analysis uh, about how publishing works and ask the question, what is the difference between an author document on the web and pretty much the same document as a published manuscript? Well, we would typically point to things like language polishing, some form of anonymous peer review, where the peer review is actually done by, by volunteers for free, and some mechanical structuring of the document. But these things alone can't justify the high article publication fees that uh, are out there. So what are we missing? What else is going on here that we're not seeing? And I would say what's not being seen are the assertions that scholarly societies and scholarly publishers add to a published document. So what do I mean by an assertion? Well, in this context, I would say an assertion is an explicit or implicit authoritative statement of fact about the document that increases its value to readers, either human or, or, or electronic. Examples of assertions are, when was the document or object published? Who created it? What did they contribute? Who funded the research? What are the conflicts of interest? What kind of peer review uh, took place? Are the statistics sound? was plagiarism checked. And as you can see, there are many such assertions that are added in the publishing process. So to summarize, a published document is just a, 
a, a regular document with some ass assertions added, and it becomes a, a published object when there are enough assertions. Now, for paper-based distribution, it made sense to encapsulate or put those assertions into the document itself, because that was the only way that we could deliver the assertion to the reader. It also made sense that an entity such as a publisher would make those assertions because they could validate the provenance of the person uh, or, and of the assertion. So a lot of the workflow that we have today derives from this idea that we need to put assertions into documents and that there always needs to be someone standing behind those. So, and this has led to the manuscript, what I call the manuscript sausage machine, which is that we collect assertions uh, from contributors. Uh, we uh, process those in a peer review workflow that involves storing them in a relational database, but also then storing them in the content in XML, converting that XML to send to a production workflow, often offshore with a completely different team, training them on how to manipulate those assertions, then transferring those assertions again into a hosting platform, such as an Atapon or a Highwire or a Silverchair, where the assertions again are transformed and sent out to third-party systems or reformatted into PDF or HTML with uh, a CSS for delivery uh, to readers. So th this workflow involves multiple technology transforms, multiple vendors, volunteers, staff, and quality assurance steps all along the way to make sure you haven't broken anything. And when you multiply out this cost for every journal and every journal article, we can see why every single assertion we make in the publication process uh, adds so much cost. So the problem with putting assertions inside the document approach is this fragility and complexity to the workflow that documents are uh, suboptimal in many ways, uh, a suboptimal way to represent the assertions. So for example, this is, an, this is how many journals display credit information. There's a lack of provenance, there's a lack of PIDs, there's a lack of uh, specific, specificity uh, to the assertions. Um, there's a loss of flexibility. Uh, it's not easily extensible because if you're uh, XML format doesn't support uh, software object or data object, uh, then it's hard to put that object through your workflow. It's the, the interdependencies are fragile and difficult to manage. And the result is that creating assertions is much more expensive than it needs to be. So is there a better way? And um, I, I would say yes, which is that we can use PIDs to create checklists uh, and federated identity management uh, to validate those assertions uh, and use those checklists to make assertions and associate them uh, with DOIs. Um, and rather than explain this, I'm just gonna switch and do a brief demo of, of how um, this can be uh, applied in practice. So I'm hoping you're uh, all seeing my browser window uh, which is uh, showing the ResCognito uh, website. And ResCognito, uh, as I said, is free, open access, and it's based on ORCID. So I've picked a random uh, researcher, Elizabeth Barton here, and we can see in the URL um, that her ORCID ID links through to what we call her open ledger, which is a list of all of the uh, publications she has uh, pulled from ORCID, and the recognitions she's received uh, on our platform. And this is on our QA server, so I'm adding data, uh, but our platform is live if you'd like to go and look at it. So the most simple um, workflow would, me, would be for me to recognize Elizabeth for something that she's done. And in order for me to do that, I need to validate my ORCID ID uh, so that the system knows who is going to be recognizing Elizabeth. So uh, because I validated my ORCID ID, we now know I'm recognizing her 
I'm going to choose the reason I'm going to recognize her. In this case, I'm going to say citizen science. And when I recognize her, you'll see that the page is updated with a new assertion. And this assertion connects me, based on my ORCID ID, with Elizabeth uh, for a specific reason, uh, with some uh, uh, quantification of the level of recognition uh, that I'm providing her. So moving beyond that simple workflow, let's now say we want to recognize her with respects to a specific digital object. So if I click the Recognize button here, which is next to this publication of hers from Crossref, we'll see a display of uh, ORCID IDs pulled from the Crossref metadata. And this also applies for uh, data site DOIs. And in fact, all you need to do is go to ResCognito and add a DOI to the end of the URL, and then that will generate that particular page um, that I showed you. So I can now recognize her for formal analysis and funding acquisition with respects to this particular manuscript. And I'll also recognize uh, her colleague, uh, Kenneth, as well. And when I click the Recognize button, you'll see a new representation of the data, which in this case is now focused on this DOI, showing the individual acts of recognition or the individual assertions related to this object. I can also make um, an assertion about the data availability related to this object, uh, this manuscript. And you'll see here there are various options. But what I'd like you to notice is that the only people who can make this assertion are the authors of the manuscript. So we can limit the creation of the assertion to people whose orchids were initially associated with the DOI. And uh, when this form is completed, it becomes part of the record uh, in the same way that I showed you before. So I've now moved on to our live system because I just want to show you how we can visualize these assertions or recognitions. So I showed you how we can visualize them with respects to a DOI, but we can also visualize them with respects to an individual and see all of the uh, recognitions that, uh, in this case, I have received uh, and the interconnectedness uh, between those. The use cases that I showed you before were of uh, uh, an individual recognizing another individual or themselves. But we also support the recognition by institutions. So in this case, uh, Earth Science Information Partners have uh, last year recognized hundreds of their members for a variety of activities, including uh, conference participation, committee presentation, uh, participation uh, prizes. And this is listed in a ledger format but can also be visualized in a sort of pie chart where we can see, OK, who did they uh, recognize for um, awards last year? And then we can see that David here was recognized. And if we drill down and look at his ledger, we can see the recognitions that he's received. So these are visual displays of the assertions. But we also make the assertions available via an API. Um, so uh, this is uh, an API on our live platform. You can do this yourselves. And uh, just adding the ORCID ID to the end uh, of this API query to read the uh, data out of the ledger will generate a JSON, a well-structured uh, JSON that you can use for your own applications. So um, this is a little application that I created that uses this API to deposit or, uh, uh, recognition and to collect it. So um, this is um, uh, Ted's, uh, Haberman's uh, uh, ORCID ID. Uh, this is not going to our live system, by the way, uh, so, uh, so no worries. And I'm going to recognize him uh, for um, peer review. And when I click Submit, this used the API to deposit that information into his uh, uh, ledger, and then I reread that out using the API to show that this institution recognized him uh, for peer review. 
Um, <clears throat> there's probably a lot more I could say here, but given the limited time and I want to give uh, some time for questions, I'll, I'll move on. So what did you just see? You saw that assertion collection, which is an important part of scholarly publishing, is not constrained by document workflow. It can be, uh, we can cut out a lot of that sausage machine by allowing people directly to make assertions. Um, but we're not sacrificing any of the attribution provenance because we're using RAWs and uh, ORCID IDs to validate who is making the assertion. Uh, you saw that it's a completely friction-free uh, experience. Um, and so there are no cumbersome steps or separate registration required to use this. And the assertion data is, is in fact, many ways better than what you'll find in a traditional manuscript uh, in terms of the way it's displayed, because you can see it in aggregated ways, but you can also see it in JSON format and pull it into other applications like a, a Chris system or another type of system where you can create your own visualizations of the assertions. And most importantly, it dramatically reduces uh, many aspects of uh, the publication workflow. So in summary, uh, collecting assertions is an essential part of what we consider of scholarly publishing. Traditional approaches are burdened by a cumbersome, uh, 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 somewhat outdated uh, process. Um, PIDs uh, such as ORCID and DOI and RAW enable a much more continuous, or shall I say creepy, approach uh, where assertions can be collected and stored outside of the document but related directly uh, back to the document. And what we do at Rescognito is we provide these checklists um, so that people involved in workflow can uh, create these assertions uh, by uh, working with us. So on that note, I think I will um, stop sharing and be available to uh, answer questions. Thanks very much for that, uh, Richard. That was amazing. And I'm sorry, I completely fluffed up my whole um, uh, emceeing duties. So lots of congratulations to you. Um, we've got a couple of questions already. Um, you also finished right on time, so congratulations. You have an internal conference clock. Um, I would love you to um, do some skill sharing so other people can um, have those skills too, myself included, really. So um, we have the first question. Are you writing assertions back to the individual's ORCID records? Uh, not as yet, no. Um, that is on our development uh, timeline and something we'd, we'd very much like to do, but we're, you know, we've just had um, basic developments put in, in place first, but that's definitely part of uh, what we're planning, provided ORCID has an appropriate place where we can put them. Awesome. Right. Um, also, another question. So I do encourage people, if you have questions, to click on the little ask a question um, tab down at the bottom of your screen or pop even pop it into the chat. I can shift my eyes over and ask. Um, second question. I love how it works in communities like the ESIP example, a way for societies or ed boards or journal, journal teams or anything to measure community support. What are the types of groups you are seeing using it? Uh, well, we're, we're still very new and we're, um, you know, looking for people to be early adopters and we can be pretty flexible about how we, how we work uh, with them uh, on that. So uh, volunteers welcome. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and I noticed Maria um, from the chat says, fabulous demo, love the visualizations. Thank you, Richard. All right. Um, any other questions can I ask? We're having a really nice, um, uh, what do we call that, parallax um, error, getting to see deep into the many repeating screens here. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I 
if can you give me power back to share my video again my uh, screen because i can show a couple of extra things if people don't have questions sure um i i think that you have that power already um oh so. no i don't want to do that oh i guess i did it now yeah that's it <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> um yeah so um one of the um the ways like for example with ESIP, so if you go to rescognito.com forward slash and then put the ESIP um raw id afterwards you'll go directly to that um ESIP, uh page um so uh we're trying to to use um i i mean that won't work for for every raw i mean it'll just work for the ones that we've implemented so We've put some data up for for PLOS um, and for eLife and for F1000 because we could harvest those um, those data. Um, so if anyone wants to try that, they can just add those raw IDs to the ResCognito base um, base URL uh, and um, and see those those data. Um, uh, we also uh, one of the sort of fun things that we've developed recently is the ability for researchers to create their own checklists. So I showed you some standard checklists like collecting credit or making a data availability statement. Um, but let's say you want, you'd publish the manuscript and you wanted to um, create a checklist to get feedback from colleagues, or you published a preprint and you wanted to get structured feedback as a kind of peer review. Using ResCognito, you can create your own checklist uh, and we give you a sort of unique URL that you can share with colleagues and then they can complete that checklist and then it, so, and it goes into your ledger as a, um, an assertion by whoever com completed it. And if you go to my, uh, my ledger on ResCognito, you'll see a few uh, completed checklists there. Or if you have a DOI, you can you know, you're welcome to, to create your own. Um, that's still very much in beta. Um, um, and we, we don't quite know how or if people will use it, but uh, it does give a lot of power to an individual researcher to say, you know, I want to, I want to collect these sort of, this sort of feedback with the respects to my DOI and to, um, know who's providing that feedback. So, so when I create that checklist, I can limit the responses to anyone with an ORCID ID or just the people listed on that DOI as being an ORCID, uh, as having an ORCID. So if I wanted to collect feedback just from the authors of the manuscript, I can limit it to just responses from, from them. Um, so yeah, I mean, that could even be used for doing something like patient peer review, um, or collecting, ma uh, you know, funder mandate information. I, I don't know. It's, it's just to totally open ended because you can create your uh, your own questions. Hello there. <laughs> Getting some waves. That sounds awesome. Um, another couple of questions. Is there a way you can do this for institutions to assert their employees, uh, or is that your is that your business model focusing on the individual researchers? No, it's it's very much um, uh, uh, our business model is to 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 become sustainable by working with institutions. ResCognito will be free to to end users as, as it is today. So, an institution um, can make assertions uh, uh, in our system. So we provide them uh, with a variety. If they want to use the API, then we give them a key, and they can make assertions. In the case of ESIP. Um, they provided data to us in a spreadsheet format and we uploaded it. Um, so there are a variety of, of ways, or it can be manual. You know, you, you can do it one by one, but that becomes pretty painful uh, if you've got a lot of people you want to make an assertion about. Um, so spreadsheet's very pragmatic, but if, if you've got some, you know, engineering time, then using the API is very effective because you can embed it in a, another application. All right. Oh, and now the questions are coming in thick and fast. Goodness. Okay. Um, I'm going to probably just manage one. 
because uh, I'm very conscious that at three o'clock we all move over to the next session. So um, Chris asks if Rescognito sends the assertions to ORCID, that would be cool. Does ORCID have a way to handle that? Maybe am I mapping to their type? I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're an ORCID uh, member, so we're a signed up member, and so we have the API to, to send the assertions back. Um, and as I said, that's definitely on our, our roadmap. And if we have a, types of assertions that then don't fit in ORCID, we can, you know, I'm sure we, we can talk to them and find a way to, to put it in there because, you know, there's no reason why it shouldn't all go, go back into ORCID. All right. Um, actually, I'm going to um, keep going. I can still see three minutes to go. To, okay. um, <laughs> so this this last one, then then we'll be done. I promise. Mm -hmm. um, so on the orchid record, it looks like there'd be multiple sections. Rescognito recognitions could po pos potentially go. Would there be support for cross-linking multiple contributions onto a single project, e.g., service and peer review? For example, would Rescognito be able to assert contributions to Project A in both the service and peer review sections and clearly indicate via the record that the two are re related? Um, I, I think I'd probably want to think on that a little bit, but the, um, I mean, you saw in my demo that if you have a DOI, you can make assertions related to that DOI. So I could recognize someone for, you know, funding, uh, um, sourcing, and also for three or four other things related to that, to that DOI. And I should just note that when we work with an institution, they can create their own recognition terms. So for example, ESIP, I can't remember which term it was, but they had it a term that was not in our taxonomy and we were able to add it for them. So we can add, you know, we, we prefer if people use from the existing terms, but if the terms we have don't cover the waterfront, then we're obviously very willing to add new terms. And there's, there's no limit to the number of assertions you can make with a, an ORCID DOI uh, term combination, no, no real limit. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thanks very much uh, for this. Um, it's Rescognito is certainly really exciting and I see an exciting future. Um, to continue this discussion, please everyone pop over to the Slack channel, the Peter Palooza session Q&A, where you can at Richard um, and ask more questions about how this will work. Um, and I thank you very much for your session. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone else. Bye-bye. Have a good evening or good morning. <laughs>